you've got to level the playing field in terms of how we take care of working people. Full time, good jobs. I think that the system is, uh, in a way, uh, becoming rigged against working people. Uh, they're getting these part time jobs. Uh, my, my oldest daughter is a good example of this. She, she works for disabled American veterans. She loves her job. Uh, but she's brought on as a consultant. She has to pay her own self employment attack. She doesn't have medical. She doesn't have retirement. And, and this is becoming a model for the, for the generation that's uh, coming uh, along. Former Republican turned former Democrat Senator Jim Webb saying we need to level the playing field. Uh, Jim, who was a Republican before running for the Senate and then spending a single term there from the state of Virginia, is thinking about running for the presidency. Presidential talk. Why, I can hear the political panel beckoning. And that's where we're headed right now. Bob Walker stays with me to question our panel on the left. Ari Ravenhoff, the host of The Agenda on Sirius XM Radio on the right. From our Newsmax TV newsroom, Javier Manharis, managing editor of The Shark Tank. Ari, I hear Jim, and it sounds like rhetorically he's gone with part of what Liz Warren says about the game is rigged. Does Jim Webb, as a former Republican and a conservative, have a chance for the Democrat nomination? Uh, I think you have more of a chance for the Democratic nomination, to be frank. Wow, that's have... really something. Whoa, no, no chance for Jim Webb whatsoever in the party I, of inclusion. I don't see if, look, if, if a candidate does enter the race and decides to challenge Hillary Clinton, the only way you're going to beat her in a Democratic primary is to the left. And Jim Webb's record on things like climate, uh, women's issues, etc., positions him well to the right of the Democratic mainstream of voters, and I don't see how he gets how he gets there. And I don't think anybody inside of Democratic politics is taking Jim Webb seriously in the slightest. All right, fair enough. Uh, Javier, your take on, on Jim Webb and the, um, well, you heard Ari basically drumming him out of right. any type of consideration. Listen, it's, it's very rare that I agree with Ari 100%, especially Jim Webb, who actually, if people don't remember, as a Democrat, he voted for Hillary Care. Oops, I mean Obamacare in 2009, 2010. So there's no way he makes it. If, if he runs, God bless him. You know, as you know, it takes a very spe someone with a very special ego to run for Congress or president. So if he runs, God bless him. But I don't think he's going to make it far. If um, if there is a uh, chance for Jim Webb to even get in it, it would have to come as as a failure of the Clinton campaign. And uh, at that point, uh, wouldn't Virginia Senator Mark Warner be the more likely Virginian that would t have somebody take a look at him? Uh, well, not just Mark. If you're, if you're getting, giving a list of Virginians, I could name three who are more likely. Mark Warner, Tim Kaine, even Terry McAuliffe would be more likely than Jim Webb. Plus, if, so, if the Hillary campaign were to go away, you would have a slew of Democrats hopping in from people like Brian Schweitzer to Andrew Cuomo to Kirsten Gillibrand to Deval Patrick, to Martin O'Malley. I mean, we can make, we can right. go on an endless list of people who would be president before right. Jim Webb. And Ari, let's not forget the person who I think is going to be the dark horse and who's going to come out of nowhere is going to be Julian Gonzalez. Obama has picked him or tapped him to be Secretary of HUD. I think he's going to be the Obama of 2016. Really? Well, right. that's, that's interesting. Well, no, that's, go not, ahead. that's a, look, I like him. I think he, I think he's a likely VP candidate I think he I think he sits back because he knows he's likely to take that position but that's what they said about Obama in 2008 look what happened well fair enough let let's get to the uh, people thought she was the heir apparent Hillary Clinton now apparently speaker Boehner is going to launch an investigation Ari uh, in the uh, minute 15 that remains we'll give you uh, 40 seconds of it does Hillary withstand all this scrutiny on the emails I think the, the problem with Clinton scandals is find me one person who was going to vote for Hillary before who's not now because she used a private email server. It doesn't exist. And the problem with Republicans and Hillary scandals is you guys are a lot like the coyote and Roadrunner. You're going <laughs> to every time you guys think you have something, you have the perfect plan devised, and then you end up falling off a cliff and going boom. 
And oh. I expect I expect that will be the result. Before we have to say bye, Javier, your take on this. Does Hillary survive all of it? I think she survives. I mean, the political, uh, the, the Clinton apparatus will survive everything. If they survive Cigargate, like, she's going to survive this. But I think the D Republicans are going to have a, a field day with this. And she's going to have to answer these questions, how she conveniently, again, uh, uh, deleted 30-some-odd thousand emails as a, instead of letting the, the State Department rummage through the emails, all the emails, and come to a decision for themselves. And, of course, as Bob Walker and I well know, there's a third group in there, the independent voters. While Republicans and Democrats may make up their mind, a lot of people could shift their opinion, even if Hillary is the nominee. Uh, we're not going to shift the political panel. We're going to bring them back. But we do need to take this break to take care of some business. Then we'll be right back on America. So unless Democrats give in, Loretta Lynch's nomination will not be on the Senate floor next week? We have to finish the human trafficking bill. The Loretta Lynch nomination comes next. And as soon as we finish the human trafficking bill, we'll turn to the Attorney General. Now. Let, let. A Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell there on CNN saying the nomination of Loretta Lynch as the new Attorney General will have to wait until the Senate completes business on a human trafficking bill. Let's continue our discussion with our political panel. Former Congressman Bob Walker is here, like me, a not-so-independent referee. Uh, meantime, on the uh, left, Ari Rabenhoft, host of the Agenda on Sirius XM Radio. And on the right, though he's center screen here, Javier Manhattis, the managing editor of the Shark Tank political blog. Now, as I understand it, gentlemen, the human trafficking bill had bipartisan support and then Democrats learned the bill had language that restricted federal funds for abortion. Ari, you used to work for Harry Reid. Is this the leverage Mitch McConnell needs to move forward with the bill to delay the confirmation vote for Loretta Lynch? Or are Democrats just fine delaying that vote since it looks like it's going to be tough to find the votes to confirm her right now? First off, I actually don't think it'll be tough to find the votes to confirm her if it comes to the floor. Second, I'm amazed that it would be tough to find the votes to confirm her since I thought Eric Holder was like the number one enemy of conservatives. Ted Cruz has ranted against him. And it seems like people like Ted Cruz would like Eric Holder to stay as attorney general because that's the result of not confirming Loretta Lynch is Eric Holder gets to continue to serve out his term. Well, the whole deal is they have to go to confirmation hearings. And when Loretta Lynch said that she would keep the policies of Eric Holder intact on amnesty and everything else, that was the problem for Ted Cruz. What about it, Javier? Is Loretta Lynch going to face a problem getting confirmed? I think so, but first let's address the human trafficking issue. I think it's shameless that the Democrats are even holding up a bill that's such of such importance just because it doesn't conform with their their pro-life, uh, pro, I'm sorry, pro-choice liberal agenda. Back to Lynch, I, I think eventually she will get. Uh, I think she'll have a tough time at it, but I think she eventually she will get through. Uh, Again, this is she, this is red meat for the for the Republicans. Maybe they do want to rumble. Maybe they want to keep bashing her the next two years. Uh, but I, I don't think that's the case. I think that they want to get her out. They want to get people the likes of Obama and Eric Holder out of office. Don't the Democrats run a a real uh, pro, have a real problem here in holding up this legislation? I mean, Harry Reid really got the reputation of shutting down the Senate, and run, once again, he's shutting down the Senate. If they don't like the uh, abortion language and so on, they can offer an amendment to to, to strike it. But uh, the idea that uh, they would keep Loretta Lynch uh, hanging in order to uh, 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 pursue an agenda uh, that is uh, pro-choice, uh, I, I think, uh, has a chance of backfiring on them. Yep. What do you think? Well, Me? Well, go, go ahead, Ari. Ari. Yep. Uh, I don't. First off, I don't think many people pay attention to the average bill making its way through the Senate, first of all. Second of all, I think... Look, this bill process is completely messed up. You had a bill that had broad bipartisan support, and then a provision got inserted, inserted in at the 11th hour, and bipartisan support went poof. That's what happens when you have bipartisan support and agreement, and then without talking to, your, to the other side who agreed to a bill before, you insert language that the other side clearly wasn't, it didn't agree to. This was clearly done by Republicans to create an issue here. Well, I don't even think, don't think first of all, I don't think this is one of those uh, general bills. I think it's a very important bill that transcends across uh, party lines. Okay, so take it out and it has broad, broad bipartisan support. If Republicans were not so insistent that pr this provision, which wasn't in the bill before, which wasn't in previous iterations of the bill that passed Congress. But doesn't this conform with existing law, so it's, it's kosher, if you would? 
Look, look, the Hyde Amendment is the Hyde Amendment. This was not in this bill before. If it wasn't in this bill, we wouldn't have this problem. So take it out and you got a bill. Uh, well, but you know, why not, just why, why, why not, not allow it? it? Why not allow it to come to the floor and, yeah. uh, and offer an amendment to strike it? Why not, why why not, have, why not, not have, have to come to the vote in, in the committee room where it should have been inserted instead of in in the dark of night without without talking to the other side? Why not? Why not have a tra Why not have done this transparently? Why have done it in the kludgy way that it got done? It got done. Well, are you saying that Republicans did what like, the Democrats been doing for the past six years? In the, in the uh, listen, on, gentlemen, uh, we have to get in here. I appreciate all the input, but alas, our time is out. To Ari, to Javier, and to Bob Walker, gentlemen, you all have our thanks. We'll have you back again real soon. The way I see it follows this break.